Let's look at an analogy for dynamic equilibrium. Imagine that you know about this really cool chemistry nightclub called Club EQ, and everyone's always wanting to get into the club. However, as with a lot of really cool clubs, there's only a certain number of people who are allowed in at any one time, because a fire marshal says that for safety reasons, you can only have so many people in there. So in this first cartoon frame, you see that there are a number of people having fun inside Club EQ, but then the bouncer doorman, uh, Bouncer K, is outside making sure that not too many people come in. So there's some people waiting in line to come in, but they haven't had a chance yet. This is an example of a chemical reaction that has reached equilibrium. We have a certain concentration of products, people inside the nightclub, and we have a certain concentration of reactants, the people outside Club EQ waiting to get in. In the second cartoon frame, you see that one of the people from inside the club has left because it's time for him to go to lab. Now, the bouncer allows one person who's waiting outside to get into Club EQ. In this third frame, we see that we've established equilibrium once again because we still have the same concentration inside the club that we did initially, and we still have the same concentration for the same number of people outside the club as we did in the initial cartoon frame. It's also important to emphasize one more aspect of equilibrium. In these cartoon frames, we saw that there were three people waiting outside and three people inside Club EQ having a fun doing all kinds of chemical reactions. However, in chemical reactions, dynamic equilibrium does not imply that the concentration of reactants is equal to the concentration of products. We could have some dynamic equilibrium systems in which there are more people inside Club EQ and fewer people outside or vice versa. If it's a really good club, there might be a lot of people waiting to get in, but since it's a smaller building, fewer people will be inside Club EQ. Now that we've seen an analogy for equilibrium, let's look at some numerical data to see how equilibrium really works. In this data table, we have a series of five different experiments, and we've monitored the concentrations of the hydrogen, the iodine, and the hydrogen iodide at their initial conditions, and then we've also monitored those concentrations once we reach equilibrium, in other words, after the concentrations have stopped changing. In this last column, we have a calculation of the equilibrium constant. In the first experiment, we have 0.5 molar concentrations of both the hydrogen and the iodine, and just as in the previous graph we've seen, we're assuming we have no hydrogen iodide to start. Once we reach equilibrium, the hydrogen and the iodine concentrations have decreased to 0.11 molar, whereas the hydrogen iodide concentration has increased to 0.78 molar. When we calculate the equilibrium constant, we find that it has a value of 50. In the second experiment, since this is a reversible reaction, we instead start with concentrations of 0 for the hydrogen and the iodine, and a concentration of 0.5 molar for the hydrogen iodide. Once we allow the concentrations of each of the three reactants and products to stop changing at equilibrium, we see that we now have 0.055 molar of the hydrogen and the iodine, but only 0.39 molar of the hydrogen iodide. When we calculate the equilibrium constant, which again is a ratio of the reactant and, con and product concentrations at equilibrium, we still have a ratio that equals an equilibrium constant of 50. We can do the same thing in the other three experiments, where we have some concentrations of hydrogen, iodine, and hydrogen iodide, but in each of those cases, when we reach equilibrium, in other words, when the concentrations have stopped changing, the equilibrium constant is always going to have the same value, no matter what the initial concentrations were. By now, you should be able to describe dynamic equilibrium in your own words. You should also be able to describe the relationship between initial concentrations and the value of the equilibrium constant.